Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. Back for a hangout today with a friend of mine all the way from Nottingham. That's right, where's that? Nottingham? Uh, please welcome the one and only Ross Bailey from YGG and Line 6. How you doing, my friend? Woo! And the crowd <laughs> It works. definitely not how wild. <laughs> Evening. Uh, when, morning, did we, when did we chat? When did we chat last time? How long has it been? Like, oh, wasn't that long, was it? Two or three months ago? Years, years. It feels like years and minutes at the same time. Right. Time's going fast. I'm just looking behind you at the, you've got the guitars again, but you haven't got the fancy lights. My friend Peter will be upset. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in the, right in the middle of moving house. So, um, so yeah, everything's getting kind of dismantled, but I left those up and didn't start filling holes and everything. That's tomorrow's job. Here we go. He's here now. Hi, Aaron. Go and enjoy your music as I start my TG Thanksgiving cooking preparations today. Thank you. Awesome stream, of course. Thumbs up. <laughs> Peter Greg. Yeah, he's a, he was here last time and he liked the lighting you had behind you. So you're moving house. Yeah. Well, wow. yeah, moving house. That's that's very um, stressful and tiring. So thanks for giving us some time today to talk about all good. Helix and 3.0 and all that fun stuff. It's awesome. All good, man. My uh, pleasure. We have um, Orb L here and Patsy Smith from Suffolk, UK. And Bob Dobson from Washington State says hello to everyone in the chat. And Wallace is here from Guildford. We got, I think we got, we got a British theme today. I'm going to speak. Like I'm going to speak extra British, not American. I will say Nottingham and not Nottingham. <laughs> Dude, to be fair, I'm I'm from Nottingham, and and I'll say Nottingham. 
There's no, <laughs> there's no keys, so it's all good. Those are the days at the Golden Fleece pub in Nottingham. Yeah, um, oh, some uh, some awful gigs there. <laughs> so what else is new? Like like how have you been? How are you playing lately? You know, I, lately, well, since the lockdown, I've been using in ears. I don't know how you feel about them. I can't remember what you said last time. But I really, really love it. And I'm finding that the tones I'm dialing in are really improving because of the in-ears. Because I'm not I'm no longer dialing in at low volume and then cranking it yeah. up at just really bright. I'm dialing it in at regular volume straight into my head. And then when I turn it up, it actually almost lacks lacks brightness. I might even add some global brightness uh, when I'm okay. playing in the room. I think it's really helped my my patches and things. Like what what's your what's your current kind of playing situation? And do you use in-ears or do you like to play with an amp in the room? I, or all of the above, I'm kind of a firm believer, I guess, in you know the right tool for the right job. Um, for some gigs, I'll use in ears at home. Um, I'm kind of in a nice position where I I can turn things up and not get too much hassle from neighbours or other people. So it's all good. But my setup, kind of here, what you can't see right here, I've got a pair of Yamaha HS7s. Um, everything's going through a Helix rack. Uh, I've got a controller on the floor, and that's been my kind of rig for since March, really. Um, I had a power cab in the room, uh, did some stuff with that, live streams and training and stuff. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then, yeah, I, ha I did have all of the amps behind me, and that was nice to plug those in and turn them up and you know, smell cooking valves every now and again. Um, <laughs> I was, there was a there was a post I can't, it was like one of the one of the pedal forums or something or gear forums um and there's this meme going round about you know with the the like a mandalorian or something going you know something about you know real guitar players play real amps uh and you've got a Kemper user a fractal user and a helix user uh and they're all like you know go and get him and this guy commented about you know, yeah, there's nothing like the feel or the smell. So, well, the feel's there, the smell maybe not so much, but <laughs> I'm definitely going to send an email to Yankee Candle because I think there's an opening there. We I, On Mondays, I do a show with Maury Rutch. He's a Martin guitar dealer here. We were we were friends. Yeah. I was a customer. And then we've started doing like a weekly live stream about my, I'm a big, big fan of Martin guitars and other, you know, all, all, lots of brands, but I do like Martin guitars. Oh, and they have, this, um, they have this, they have this, you know what I love about Martin guitar is the history it's incredible. Yeah. Like the history of that company is amazing. And it's, it adds so much kind of nostalgia and, and uh, mystique to the company. But one of the things about their guitars is when you open the case, the smell that comes out is amazing. So I've made a T-shirt. We, we, we coined this phrase, sound hole sniffer, and I put it onto a T-shirt. So I must send you one for Christmas. If you promise yeah. to wear it in one of your streams. <laughs> I'll, I, can, I can do that, mate. No problem. Sound hole sniffer. Yep, you can look it up on teespring.com. I'll put the link in the chat. Peter Gregg, I knew he'd say this. He said, um, will your setup come back with the lights in the background? He misses that because he's a, he's a photography guy, right? He's a, he's a camera guy. As, yeah, I mean, I um, I won't bother you with the story, but I got into photography a bunch of years ago. So, yeah, the kind of um, the whole lighting thing, which, you know, you, you've got this flare coming down here that's because there's no shade on my light in here and i don't have any space in front of me to put any led lights or anything but yeah the lighting thing is a, 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 you know a learning curve on its own for sure but to answer your question peter yes the the thing will come back in a form um hopefully the house i'm moving into it'll be a slightly different layout but it will still look cool and there'll still be pretty christmas lights even though it's not quite christmas because why not break, break the rules i just put a link in the chat if you're interested in one of my sound hole sniffer shirts for the holidays uh, or a mug or a sticker pick one up now <laughs> okay now that's now the business out of the way Okay, cool. So, no, I just want to. I just want. I want to make a video about this. I I was so against in ears for so long, you know, because when I was when I was in London doing gigs, I had like an orange amp behind me. I had a big PA behind me. I'm not used to in ears. It's kind of, when you first use them, it can kind of sound weird because you're listening right to the sound, aren't you? It can kind of sound yeah, yeah. kind of harsh and artificial. But then you've got to dial that sound in for the in ears, and I just find it translates really well. So if anyone's watching this and using like a modeler, give the in ears a try. I think I just think. I was forced to use them because of this situation here. And actually, it made me laugh earlier on, I was dialing in some patches to show today, 
and I turned on, I switched channels on the amp, and it, it was like screeching through the, through the, the monitors. And I thought, oh man, the neighbor, the neighbor turned their jazz music on upstairs. I thought, yep, yeah, I just upset the neighbors again. So in-ears have a multitude of uses. You can play late at night. And I just think this, I just think you make better patches with in-ears. If you, if you live in an apartment and you've got to play at such you know, low volumes, I just think the patches are better when you use the in-ears. I really do. Anyway, that's beside it's the point. You know what, though, just to touch on that, for, mm. for, for anyone that's listening, and I mean, I've worked with Line 6 products and, and you know, and other modeling products and, you know, real amps and you know, valve amps and direct solutions, all I've been through every possible piece of gear that you can imagine. Um, and the, this goes for every piece of gear, regardless of what you're using. You want to be dialing it in for partly for the environment, but the kind of situation that you're that you're um, that you're going to be looking at. So, if you're going to do a gig and you're going to use in ears and you want to dial that sound in, then use those in ears to dial that sound in. Um, in the same way that if you're using a Helix or whatever with a power amp and a cab or a power cab uh, or full cable method with an amp, you know, get together with the band in a rehearsal room or at the venue and tweak that sound for that particular. Uh, situation and you will you will be so much happier um because i do see so many people comment about being disappointed with a particular setup because they've you know dialed you know they've got a brand new boogie dual rectifier or something you know 100 watt tube amp and they've got an awesome sound at home and then they get to the gig and it sounds like garbage or the other way around um, because things work differently in different situations and your ears change and everything from humidity to whatever. So yeah, I, I am a big, um, uh, you know, a big lover of in-ears for certain situations, particularly if I've, I've got to do background vocals or using a click track. Um, like I say, I'm kind of lucky enough at home to, to not have to use them. Mm. Um, if I did use headphones, probably like a pair of DT hundreds or something like that you know studio headphones um uh, and apparently you know being a company guy yamaha do outstanding headphones i've not tried <laughs> I've, I've not tried them yet uh but a, a hd hth i believe the model is and they've got a few different ones hey don't get me um, wrong i've still got yeah. the tube amp and if i could turn that thing up and play it loud i would really like to do that it's just when you live yeah. in an apartment when for so long i was trying to dial stuff in at such low volumes and as we know, you know, science and everything, once you turn those things up, you hear it differently. It sounds different. So for my situation right now, being like stuck in the house, I just think these are these have been a game changer for me. I'll just say that. I'm really, 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 right. I've really adjusted and really loving them. So let's and talk about- Do your research as well, folks. Do your research on your in-ears because they are not all created equal. I used it. These are like 60 bucks from Amazon because I didn't want to, I didn't want to spend a lot of money to start with in case I didn't like them. And these have been really, really good. And I think in the future, I'd like to spend the money and get the custom, you know, really fancy, yeah. expensive ones. I would. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're a step above. But even yeah. these cheaper ones, I don't know. I just like the experience. I, like, I love hearing the really? stereo. I mean, the stereo is incredible. It's just so many, so many pluses to, to using them for me now. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just surprised how much I enjoy them now because I never thought I would ever use them. So yeah, I guess yeah, doing, yeah. doing live streaming, you know, makes you, make, if you stream every day and talk with them on, you get used to that feeling of having the sound in your head, you know? Yeah. Anyway, let's talk cool. about, let's talk about 3.0. Because yes. I, I did an initial reaction. I did a chat with Chad Boston and I've been playing it in preparation for this stream. And I got to say, I'm honestly, I'm really, really, really super impressed. And the reason is that the Helix was always like copying amps, copying effects. That's fine. As a solo musician and, a, and someone that plays in a three-piece band a lot, I wanted more. I wanted the freeze effects. I wanted the pitch effects. I want to sound bigger than I am. Mm. Like, you know, I love plugging into a tube amp and just playing. But when I use digital, I wanted to do things that the analog could never do. And I'm so happy with 3.0 because I feel like that's exactly the way you guys are going. Like, you're, do, you're doing the pitch. You're doing the freeze. You've got the acoustic simulator, which I, I had no idea was coming. I mean, those things are... You know, depending on the guitar, and obviously your your source guitar is an electric, so it's not going to sound just like a Martin HD28 or a Yamaha acoustic, but it's still a great tonal option to have. Again, a sound that you can't get from analog. So yeah. I love this kind of 
I love the way Line Six have kind of done their amp modeling and their pedal effects. Get the get the uh, meat and potatoes there, and now you're going off into new territory. This is what I've been waiting for, and I personally want to see even more of that. I want to see looping beats, drum machines. I want to be able to you know make a huge sound sync in with the drummer and the keyboard player, and just sound huge with like three people. And I see that kind of direction coming now, and I'm really, really, really happy that Line Six have done this. What What are your thoughts on 3.0? Um, I, I've been busy with a ton of other stuff, so I've only like really scratched the surface with it. Um, and I'll be honest, when I first got a beta version, I think I, I spent an entire week just on the, uh, the, the diesel VH4 model. <laughs> it was kind of, I knew it was coming. I was looking forward to it. So I just called that up and it suddenly was like, oh, that, that's the sound. Um, so yeah, I've been uh, been loving that model. Uh, just got into the Princeton model uh, the last couple of days. Uh, that's fantastic. A uh, couple of the new fuzzes sound incredible. Mm, lots of fuzz. Lots, uh, of, fuzz. lots of fuzz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of fuzz. Um, uh, the Horizon Drive is great. Mm. Um, so much so that Misha Mansour kind of gave us his blessing. He was like, "That's that's awesome. Use the name. Fill your boots." Oh, t tell so us that, more. Tell us more. Is this like is this like the rev where the company yeah. said that's you know, you've nailed it? We're happy with that. It's absolutely perfect. You know, we're, we we I, we you endorse it kind of thing. I I don't want to talk out of turn, but I believe that was the case. Mm. That's great. You know, when you when you get something where the company has said, yeah, we approve it. I, I remember I met the guys at Rev just before they you put the Rev in the firmware a, a pedal exhibition in Brooklyn here, and. Um, I think they told me back then, like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, it's amazing. We're, we're, we're really happy with it and everything's going great. And I was like, that's such a nice thing to have that endorsement from the company and kind of work together. And, yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Horizon Drive is great, actually. There's one thing with that. I, I was hoping I could turn the noise gate off completely, but I feel like it's always there a little bit. I don't know about that, but we'll, we'll look at that later maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I tell you what, one of my favorite amps or profiles on the Kemper was the VH4. One of the things that really, really, I thought that's a great profile. And now there's a VH4 in the Helix. So I've been trying to do some tone matching um, just today. And I mean, again, also the Fender Clean. I've wanted a different kind of Fender Clean. And I think this Princeton is it. Everyone's going to think I'm full of it. And I'm just saying this because you're here. But this is the absolute truth. All the stuff in this update, well, apart from the fuzzes, I'm not really a fuzz guy. When I do mm -hmm. use them, I enjoy them. But it's not something I've ever really used in the past. Maybe now I'll use them because they're there. But mm. these two amps, and I, was, I thought there might be more amps, but these are the two amps I wanted. Because we'll talk about our, our go-to patches later. I like a really clean clean a really mm. heavy kind of thrashy sound and a nice kind of crunch in the middle. And that's just, that's how I program my sound. So I, I, this, it's just like this was made, I hate to say it, but it's like this update was made for me. And I'm, that obviously makes me very happy. And I'm sure other people feel the same. It can't just be me that thinks like this, but I think these things were really uh, features that I was missing and now I have them and I'm so happy. I wanna show you something. Um, this is just something fun I'm working on for a video. I've, I've taken, my favorite Fender profile and the VH4 profile from the Kemper, and I've tried to tone match them. And in doing that, I've discovered a few things. And the, the main thing I've discovered is how important EQ is in certain situations. Here are my thoughts on the Kemper. When someone makes a profile as opposed to a model, mm. they, are, they are setting up that amp. They are running preamps and external EQ and making a certain sound. It's almost like the ultimate preset. You're getting a preset given to you. That's why a lot of people like the Kemper. When yeah. you load up the model on the Helix, you're getting just the model, just the amp, and you've got to do that other stuff yourself, okay? Yeah. So I want, to, I want to play some examples. If you're watching along, please put some headphones in to hear this the best way. Um, let's make sure you can hear it. So this is the, the new amp. We're gonna, play, we're gonna play later on, but this is a recording of the new clean amp. Um, on the Helix and a recording of the Kemper profile. So I'll play the Kemper profile first of all. I've not changed anything. I turned off all the effects. It's just the amp and the cab, okay? Here's the Kemper clean. And here's the Helix.
It's really impressive. It's a stock cab and it's there's actually no additional EQ there. That's just the amp and the stock cab. And it's a little bit low in volume, I apologize. I haven't mastered these. But if you listen back later on, turn up a bit, and I'll make a video on this too. But I think that for all for all, for all intents and purposes, I think they're really identical. So again, I'm really happy because <clears throat> the, great, the great thing with things like the Kemper is there's so many amps available, but now the Helix has so many amps. I think there's something for it. Well, I'm not going to say something for everyone, but the, the sounds that I wanted now are in there. So I'm really happy. Here's the VH4. It's not exactly the same, but this is really interesting, Ross, because if you hear... I mean, check out this profile. It's, it's played on my, on my SSS Fender Strat. It's really, really kind of scoop sounding, but that's what the sound is. So let me just play this for you. Um, check out this profile. Now here's the Helix with no EQ, no additional EQ, just to build just the amp EQ. It's quite nasal. It's it's not as um, scooped as the profile is, right? It's more of like a direct sound, which you might want. But I think this is this is what what happens. You load up the profile against the the Helix one, and you can't get them to sound the same. Here's some here's with external EQ, two blocks of EQ added after the amp though, on the Helix. I'm not saying if that's a good tone or not, but let me play the two back to back. So yeah, really, really, really much closer. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really happy that I can get those sounds that I wanted now from this update and that they're in there. So that's just me highlighting how happy I am with those two new amps because I now have access to them in my Stomp and my Helix. It's really awesome. Um, Neither of them are particularly cheap. I mean, it, it's hmm. an interesting thing that because when you call up a model on Helix, it's you're kind of doing the same as calling up um, a profile on a Kemper. Okay, so uh, uh, the Kemper does the profile and it's profile of, of the amp as that particular guitar player or engineer has set it up with all the EQ and everything and anything outboard or external. Um, and, and that is the sound. Okay. That's the sound they want you to hear. And that's great. And you can kind of tweak that or you can change that with extra EQ or with the onboard EQ or whatever. Helix is similar. Obviously we, and this has been talked about in the past because we go down to the component and how all the components interact. We kind of, we don't profile, but for want of a better term, we profile from the inside out. So we're actually, um, we're going, right, how does this, it's not just how the app sounds, it's how it works and how each component interacts with the next component. Um, that's very, very prominent on certain boogie amps. Uh, for example, certain boogie models for sure, where everything is so interactive. You know, you get a Mark series boogie, and if you look at two controls at the same time, your sound absolutely changes dramatically. Uh, and, and Helix is, a, is the same. So you call up a Mark series, you know, the Mark IV model, and, you know, you've got to work at that app yeah. like yeah. you have the real thing. Um, some of the Marshall models, you know, the bass control it doesn't do a hell of a lot because on a, the majority of Marshall amps, the bass control doesn't do a hell of a lot. Um, you know, they're not particularly kind of ballsy amps on, on the kind of boomy low end uh, that you would get out of a Boogie or a Rev or, um, uh, you know, the Bedonk model, for example, something like that. So, um, but very long-winded way of getting to the point so so you 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 load up a Kemper profile and it's how that person has profiled it how they've set it up and everything mm -hmm. and it's the same with um with helix you call up an amp model 
and there is a default setting of how our guys have programmed that amp. Um, you know, and unfortunately, it's kind of it goes through a few different processes and a few different people. But we go, okay, we think this is like the the the, the classic setting for this amp, I guess. Um, and this actually brings us really nice and smoothly onto a, a fantastic feature, one of my favorite features in 3.0, which is the user defaults. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, particularly, so so my main amp um, for, for, for real tube amps is uh, Boogie Lone Star. And I love it, you know, big Andy Timmons fan. But when I call up either channel one or channel two, that isn't how I have it set. So every time up to now I've called that amp up, I've had to change the controls. And it's fine because it takes seconds, but now I can save that how I have those amps or any pedal or any other effect or whatever. Um, when I call that effect up or amp model or cabinet model or anything, um, I can have that set up exactly how I always have that set up as a great starting point and save that. So whenever I call it up, it's me. I just, I just, I just used it. I'm building some presets for today. I just used it. Look, so I've saved the princess, and that's how I, I made them. I made them. I did that tone matching thing. I, I guess Great. my takeaway from this is, how do you know what tone you're looking for? I mean, see, I've got the Kemper here, so I'm able to load up a Kemper profile that I know I enjoy, and then match this to that. I guess another way is to find isolated guitar tracks and match to that. Because how do you know? I mean, some people, some new players might not have even played a real amp or know what what you know, what is a good clean tone, what is a good crunch tone. I mean, how, how oh, do you I'm, deal with that? Absolutely. I mean, I I am a dweeb. Um, I have no friends, and I've been through so much gear, and I've worked in music stores as well. So I'm in a nice position where I kind of know what things sound like, and I know where I want to get. Um, I'm also in the privileged position that you know. I'll, I work for the company uh, and, and, and I get to play with this stuff day in, day out. So I'm kind of familiar with a lot of the app models as well. But I think some of it's a learning curve. You know, some of it is common sense um, or a little bit of Googling. If you're after a sound, uh, it's, and I've said this before, if you want to sound like Joe Bloggs, guitar player, you know, Nuno Bancourt, Steve Vai, whoever. Um, Josh Smith, you can go, right, okay, quick Google, what gear does Josh Smith use? And like I say, I'm a dweeb and I've got no friends. So it's like, right, okay, I know he, I know his favorite amp setup historically will be a Fender Super Reverb um, and a Vox AC30. So you go, right, okay, we're going to start there. You call up those amp models um, and you, you dial in the sound, um, you know, you tweak the sound and you kind of, most of the time, you're 95% there. Any pedals usually are the icing on the cake for a lot of things. Um, but I did an experiment recently. There seems to be a lot of videos going around at the moment with the old Rockman X100. Uh, Tom Schultz, little plastic box that Def Leppard used and a million other people use. And I kind of like, that's 80s and I'm a child of the 80s. So I tried dialing it in and mm. I, I think I nailed it. You know, mm. we don't model that. So I kind of picked an amp model that I thought had the right kind of amount of gain structure and compression, and then just scrolled through, I think, two or three different cabinets, got close, changed the microphone, and it was like, there it is. Well, that's so, just, I, I mean, I'm, a lot of people know this, but it's amazing how much difference the different mics and the cabs make to the yeah. EQ section anyway. And like with that Kemper profile, I don't know, I assume because it's a VH4, he used a, four, a 412. And you know, I assume all these things, but you have to you have to do that. If you if you use a one twelve or one ten, it's not going to sound. And you have to do loads of EQ. So the mic and all that stuff is so important. So I'll, I'll never be able to match that tone. But I got so close, and and I think I I needed the extra extra EQ as well. Like I needed that. Like I, I took all yeah. the mids out, and I then went and took some more mids out. But the great <clears> thing <throat> is, you can just add EQ blocks. I mean, you can have four EQ blocks if you want to, and just keep EQing to shape your sound. Yeah, I think, I mean, particularly the diesel, the, the, the VH4, it's such a, a thick, kind of very mid-focused amp tone yeah. anyway. Um, very, very creamy. It's kind of, it's it, to my ears, it's like if a Marshall and a Boogie had a baby. 
Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's got that that thick kind of mid range, but a tight low end. Um, you know, real creamy smooth top end, and it's you know you listen to someone like Tim Pierce. I mean, he uses that all the time for for lead stuff, and you can go, yeah, okay, that that makes sense. It's it, there's a, a certain compression, a certain articulation um, to the feel of it. But yeah, those mids, even on the default, and and I've done this with a couple of models where I don't necessarily like the actual default settings, but I've tried those jamming along with a backing track or something. It's like, oh yeah, actually in context, in a mix, yeah, yeah. it's perfect. You know, what might sound terrible in isolation, not terrible, but not to your liking or whatever, um suddenly you put that in context and it's like oh yeah that 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 works um talk about isolated guitar tracks um if you haven't go and do it and everyone watching go and do this um i mean nuno Bentoncourt, i'm a i'm a massive fan um there is an isolated guitar track from um i think it's play with me um from the first album and it, it is the most awful guitar sound in the world I mean, you've never heard anything that bad mm. in isolation. Mm. I mean, we're talking broken little five watt practice amp from 1982 that cost twenty dollars. Yeah. Um, but in context, it sounds enormous. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's the other yeah. thing. That's the other thing with the in ears, and I've been doing uh, live like backing tracks and loops and yeah. things on my live streams. You kind of care less about the tone because no longer are you just sitting there just playing a tone. You're in a mix with a drummer and a bass player and you've got vocal yeah. effects. And that's the other reason I would like to see Line 6 add in more advanced looping and track import and stuff like that. Because then, again, that's something that a tube amp cannot do. Like the tube amp does one thing really well, right? Makes a great tone, but it can't do all that other stuff. And once you're playing with a band, a lot of that, a lot of that doubt kind of fades away. Um, just a thought. I mean, just just on that, it's bear in mind the kind of versatility and and what you can do with um, with a helix. You want to incorporate looping um, or or more advanced looping. I mean, I've not played with a shuffle. I'm not a big looper anyway, but the shuffle looper uh, for three point oh that's supposed to be really cool. Do some really interesting things, um, but you could quite easily um, have a laptop. Um, you know, as part of your rig, run in Ableton, for example, um, and actually trigger some of those loops through MIDI uh, with yeah. Helix. You, know, yeah. you can have a specific wow. button, start, stop, do all yeah. that business, yeah. and actually feed that audio into Helix with its own range of effects as well. So yeah. um, it's bonkers. Well, here's the thing with 3.0. The effects, the pitch effects bl have blown me away, but they do use a lot of DSP. And we're, all the customers are now saying, uh, you know, I want more DSP. What I've been doing is running native because native has no limitations. So I'm thinking what people could do is buy one of the new Macs, the new M1 uh, Macs, like the MacBook Air, so powerful, use an interface with it. Use that on stage or at home. Or use native. Use native live and then run that into Ableton or something like that and then do your looping. I wonder, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that I know, I know you can't talk. You might not even know about the next kind of hardware that's coming. But I keep talking to people like, I wonder where this is going because it's a bit like the, I likened it with Chad the other day to the new PlayStation, right? The PS5 has come out, but it's not as powerful as the, as the PCs for gaming. So you're already, already you're, you're, you're against a brick wall with, te with technology now. So, yeah. and like, like the latest iPads are so powerful. I think they could run, I think they could run a, a, a path with, with um, all, the, all, the, all the pitch effects easily because they're oh, so sure. powerful. So it'd be great to see more companies do like an app version where you can run the apps that you want. So the looper you want, the Helix um, app, and and put them together. I think that will happen eventually. I don't think the market's ready for it yet, but I just I think that's a way around DSP, especially using native. I mean, native is, is awesome. And I've got it set up with my MIDI controller so I can switch snapshots and turn effects on and off. And then you're not limited because I am struggling a bit, even with the Helix floor, like if I load the pitch block at an amp, then I've, I'm basically I'm out of DSP. Um, yeah. I think I think they've said there's some optimizations coming in in the next like in, in the next point one update. They're working to optimize that and things like that. So that's cool. But of course, it, it'll always be limitations because it is so darn good. And we'll, we'll we'll demo it later on. I'm going to play some some pitch stuff. But 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's always kind of ways and means around things. Um, you, you know, bear in mind you've got two lines. Um, you know, two different uh, DSP. Uh, top line has a DSP chip. Bottom line has a DSP chip. Um, so yeah, you can separate things, and you can do. There are way ways around things. Um, but yes, the, the 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 poly stuff is pretty greedy. Um, yeah. It's DSP thirsty. Yeah. So. But it sounds incredible, so it's okay. So I got, that was the long way of me just saying I'm really happy with these two new amps because they're the exact amps that I wanted, the tones that I wanted, and I'm really happy with the pitch stuff. Of course, DSP will have to be worked around. Um, and then it's all, it's all great, but uh, like the fuzz stuff, I'm glad it's there, but I haven't really looked at it yet. What do you think your favorite uh, feature is in 3.0? Easy. Yeah. Preset spillover. Ah, so that's one thing I haven't used yet. So you're, you're talking about the mode where you lose a chip, basically, you lose a path, but you can go to the next preset with no gap and spill yeah. straight over. That is I useful. Mean, yeah. Well, so so the preset I sent you, um, you see, it kind of takes up two lines and there's a whole bunch of stuff in yeah. there. Yeah. Um, generally, if I'm building a preset, unless it's a specialty preset, you know, I'm, I'm doing an artist one or, um, you know, something very, very specific where I only need a handful of blocks, for something that I'm designing for myself, it's it's usually a variation on a theme. Um, and really, there's only two, maybe three things that, that, that differ, and that's maybe the amp model and one of the boost pedals. Um, I'm, I'm a big user of clean amp and stacking different overdrive pedals to, to come. That's how I get my high gain sound. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do use two different amp models, but the second amp model is really a higher gain. It's just got a, the same thing with a little bit of hair. Um, and then it's lower gain overdrive pedals into that. And that's kind of where I go. Uh, with preset spillover, be because we didn't have that before, I would do everything within one preset because I didn't want to switch presets. I would use snapshots. N now I've got preset spillover. I can do whatever I want. I can fit everything on one line yeah. um, and still have a parallel path and stick a ton of stuff in there and use snapshots within that, but then quite easily go to another preset with a whole different bunch of things completely different and still get those delay trails. And it's the delay trails. I don't notice the reverb trails because my reverb is, is usually only slightly there. You know, It's just enough to cheer me up if I'm in isolation. But delay, if, if I go from, you know, a high gain lead sound with delay and then I go to a crunch sound or a clean sound without the delay, if I don't get those delay trails, it bothers me so much. Mm. Um, so preset spillover, I, I, we've not made a big deal out of it particularly, but for me, it's huge. It's really, really huge. I'm trying not to use it, but it is something I wanted because I like to have an amp for clean and an amp for mi uh, medium and an amp for heavy. Yep. And you can't okay. do that in one preset. But if you use preset spillover, you can do that. And you could even use control center, I guess, to assign the three patches to your top level and just switch between them seamlessly. Yep. But having said that, what I'm trying to do right now is just use that new clean amp, the new heavy amp, and some pedals to get me where I want to be without doing that, because you are sacrificing your other DSP chip when you yeah, do sure. that. But again, it's, it's, it's made it very flexible and it's a great option to have. I'm also using Command Center on the stump. And some people said, why would you want that? Because it's only got three buttons. I actually figured out that the this is the mission um, TT2. You can also use four and five on here in Command Center. So I haven't got it set up today, but when I go live with the stump, I have this for one camera and this for the other camera. It sends a keyboard command to this software. I'm using Ecamm Live right now. And in Ecamm Live with, with commands, you can actually switch scenes. So when I press one button, for example, it would go to this, and one button, it would go to this. So really? that's that's a nice little feature for me personally. I don't know, obviously not everyone will use that stuff. But again, we're living in a world now of live streaming. So I think it came at a, a great time, stuff like that. Absolutely. So. All right, cool. cool. So, shall we do some playing? Shall we check it out? We'll see if this will work. What, what, what are we doing? <laughs> we are going here. I'm going to grab okay. my. Let me go. Let me let me play a few things that I was messing around with. We're, 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 we're matching now as well, aren't we? Yeah, I haven't actually shown this on the channel yet. After we chatted last time about acoustic guitars, and you were telling me about this HSS Strat because I I, I haven't got an HSS guitar, 
I found this on Reverb for an absolute steal. It's still got the uh, the uh, plastic on it, and it's just it's it is. You're right, an amazing guitar. Like I you still I, I still play my Fender a lot of the time. Actually, it's amazing how much less volume the Fender has to this. The Fender is a really vintage output guitar, so my patches have to be tweaked for that. But um, this is if I if I start doing get like um, wedding gigs and things again after lockdown, this is the guitar I would take because it's versatile and. You know, if, if someone knocks it over, I won't cry too much because it's, you know, not too hard to replace. But this is, if you're looking for electric guitar, I think this is a really great option. Um, it's been, I think I said last time, um, sort of, I don't know if you can see, but kind of back on the back wall, um, uh, I've got a, you know, is it, uh, there you go, that one. Mm. It's a uh, um, classic antique and it's fantastic and it costs yeah. loads of money. Yeah. Um, that is the backup to my Pacifica. Yeah, you, you, and, you know, and and <laughs> I know these people out there going, "Oh, you're full of it." Or, well, they're going to say it know. has to be, right? It has to be. You, you can't work for yeah. Yamaha and play a play a sir, right? That that that's the cool thing. I it's you know, I can I've got a, I've got a bunch of gear. I can kind of play whatever uh, whatever I want to an extent. The the beauty is, I work for a company that make really awesome guitars. So, you know, no, I don't have to play this stuff I, uh, in my own personal time when I'm doing a gig. I choose to because it's fantastic. Shane says, may I ask what model that is? Always keen to hear endorsement for prospective purchases. I can't, what, what model is it? I've forgotten. It's a Pacifica. Uh, it's the 612V. 612V. Um, I'm, I'm going to say something now. Honestly, I owned a Pacifica as a child. I mean, as a teenager, by my first guitars, I didn't bond with it very well at all. But back then, I didn't know what a good guitar was anyway, to be fair. But I never, and I can say this to you, Ross, I never thought I'd ever own a Yamaha Pacifica again. And this guitar has really, really, really impressed me. It's an amazing guitar. And actually, just, just the other week, I saw a guy um, doing the kind of rig that I have with the stomp, and he said exactly the same thing. I bought one of these to take to weddings and bars in case a guy knocks it over or a girl knocks it over, you know, and it doesn't, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter. Of course it does, but you're not taking a $5,000 guitar. And no, you know, this, this does things that my, my Strat doesn't do. My Fender Strat doesn't do. So I'm really, yeah, I'm really, really, really blown away by this guitar. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. The, the only thing I really did was uh, I took the finish off the back of the neck because I, yeah, I, I, like, I like a more natural neck. It's glossy, but that doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't really bother me. Um, yeah. And I've got some noise if I'm not in position two and four. Yep. But you know, you would on any guitar. So no, it's really, really, I'm really, really, really impressed. All right. The great thing is today we have the same guitar. So um, the preset you sent me, that's a nice thing as well. Because when you buy presets or download presets, if someone's made it with a different guitar, it can be quite different. Like if someone's made a preset with a Les Paul and I try it on my low output Strat, of course, yeah. Even the volumes are going to be different, and that will impact the gain and everything. So it's really cool. In fact, if all Helix users bought this guitar, Ross, then uh, the presets would be easier to dial in, wouldn't they? Potentially, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Also, certainly, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. B b between users, but no, you're right. You, you know, every guitar, uh, even even the same models, can sound totally different, and and the player and all that business. But um, I mean, the, like I said, the Sur I use. Is considerably brighter than this, um, mm. so you know. Whilst they're both very, very similar in construction, you know, rosewood neck, um, uh, uh, rosewood fretboard, maple neck, older body, uh, the Sur is considerably brighter. You know, obviously mm. pickups have certain things to do with it as well. But uh, I, I like this. I, I love the Pacifica. It yeah. just out of the box, it's awesome. It looks great too. I think when I when yeah. I hear when I hear the word Pacifica, I think back to being a teenager playing that guitar that I had. But that wasn't a Pacifica like this. This is uh, much much better. Anyway, well, this this is just quickly. This is closer to the original Pacificas, uh, uh, which if you go back to the very very first Pacificas, they were never entry level. They were high end super strats. You know, mm. they, they were fantastic. Mm. Um, you know, you get the old nine oh four or whatever, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're serious, serious business. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me have a, a free Helix lesson from the product specialist then. So what I like is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll take send, send the bill to um to uh, Frank and uh, those guys later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I hope they're not watching. Um, I like a really clean, clean, bright, but not too bright. So let me show you what I've dialed in. I'm going to turn my mic, my mic off. You can still talk. If you want to tell me to try something, you can still talk to me. But I'm going to okay. turn my mic off so we don't hear the strings. This is the new model with a stock cab. It's a 1 by 10. I actually like small combo um, speakers and things like 110s, 112s, because that's what I'm used to playing. I'm not used to playing big stacks and things like that. So I'll just play some stuff on different positions. And let me know what you think as I'm playing. Uh, let me know if you want me to try anything, okay? Hmm. Okay. But don't be too rough on me. I'm 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 kinda I'm trying to zoom in and see it on the small screen. I can zoom uh, in on it. I can zoom in on it. Hang on. Oh you can zoom in on it. There yeah, you go. Yeah. And I don't but, have my glasses handy. I'm so unprepared. Um Can you see that? So we've got, we got the Princeton model. Cool. I shall move yeah, us, yeah. I shall move us out of the way. Yeah, get rid of it. No one needs to see my face. I'll make you smaller. There we go. And me. Perfect. Oh, yeah. All right, you see that? You're getting, you're getting professional. I don't. It's just. That sounds so, awesome. So I like super clean, as you can hear. I, I, I like yeah. super clean, a bit of grit, and then uh, a crunch, kind of, when I say crunch, I don't mean heavy crunch. I mean like, you know, just uh, like a Stones type distortion thing. And then a yeah, heavy yeah. thing, that sort of punky Green Day stuff. So that is my super, super clean. And I'm really happy with it. Actually, it's quite, it's a little bit bright to me, but I can guarantee if I took my headphones off and listened in the room, it would probably be just about right. Maybe need a bit more treble. But yeah, okay. that, and so what do you think? And I've just got a compressor there, no chorus or anything yet, or anything like that. Just a, basically just an amp, a cab, and a reverb there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, from from here, it sounds fantastic. I mean, if you want to warm that up a bit, if you go to your cab um, side on there. Okay. I don't know what the default on this is. <clears throat> um, so uh, what mic is on that? I can't see. Uh, I've got a... 87 condenser. That's pretty, that's a pretty harsh mic, I'd say. I could try a ribbon, yeah. right? Um, yeah, the ribbon. So I mean, if you want really, I say really warm, I, I would say dark. 4032 is dark. Um, the 160 uh, has taken over as favorite for me over the 121. Let's just show the difference the mics make. I'll just I'll just play through and play each um, microphone. Hang on. It's, it's enormous. Without even seeing, I already know that's the one. Yeah. One twenty one. One fifty. The real kind of dark and woolly. Some are, some are really bright, some have got more mid-range, like it, it, 
that's the place to start for your EQ, isn't it? Just choosing the right microphone to start with. So, yeah, for sure. I mean, something I like to do as well is um, I'll use a separate cab block, um, but I'll use a dual cab block yes. rather than a single one. Yeah. Uh, and the default for the second cab is always the one, uh, the one by twelve uh, boogie cabinet. Yeah, with the lead eighty. Uh, that just seems to fit with any cab. Um, so yeah, it, it's cool. Uh, that's shame. something that that's something that Fractal do in most of their um, patches. I've noticed they have two cabs. One is doing the low end, and one is doing the high end, and it works really nicely. And you can also pan them as well. I, I'm only in mono today, but this new stereo effect thing is cool too. In the in the 3.0, where you can have like a stereo image, and it makes your yeah. sound sound bigger and not quite so direct. It opens it up a little bit. All these little tricks are going to make them, you know, just make just open things up slightly, just, su just subtle effects here and there to make it even better. But like I said, this is just an amp in the cab and a reverb. And that, yeah, I like that too. So is this your go-to right now? The, um, what was it? The, uh, the Princeton. The 160 ribbon, right? Uh, the, the 160 is, is a good go-to, but it does depend on the amp um, or it depends on what kind of sound I'm going for. Um, okay. You know, the 57 is important for a lot of things. Um, I, I do like the 160 uh, now over the 121. It just seems a, a little bit more of a rounded um, or more versatile thing. But I'll use a 67. I'll use an 87 for certain things. It, it, it Again, it's the right tool for the right job. Um, <laughs> and the beautiful thing with, with, with this is, you know, if I'm doing a session or whatever, I'm just, yeah, I can call it all up. So it's brilliant. Very one says convincing acoustic tone. This isn't acoustic, this is electric amp to electric guitar. But having said yeah. that, I am an acoustic player, and this is the kind of sound I'm going for right now. I want that kind of strummy, acoustic y sound for those kind of songs that I do. Um, I guess you also could add the amp simulator and pan that around as well. But let me just try that. Um, you can keep talking, I just want to try that uh, cab out. Another cab try is the two twelve bluebell. Oh, uh, sorry, silver bell, silver bell, two twelve silver bell. Yeah, that's warmer, isn't it? Straight yeah. away. Yeah, but if you kind of take the high cut back up a little bit, you can gain a little bit more of that high end back. Um, Well, I dialed, just, I, I dialed this patch in with the other guitar, so that's really um, that's a, that's different as well. But that's cool. Now, um, your man was at Shane asking for a convincing acoustic tone. <clears throat> have you tried the acoustic simulator yet? I have. I have a. Let me just save. Let me just actually, I won't save that as I go. Let me just go to. Disclaimer: Doesn't sound like an acoustic guitar. Of course, and you know but why. You know Neither why? Does it modeling. You know why? Because the we're playing we're playing tens or nines. Uh, I've got, is, it, is this nines or tens? I'll come stock on this guitar. Anyway, it's, it's, it's um, acoustic. Nines, you'd have nines, right? So acoustic, you'd have twelve strings, uh, twelve gauge. You would have um, thicker strings, and you would. You, um, we're using magnetic pickups here. You wouldn't. You'd have an undersound pickup and acoustic. These things straight away are against you. Although I've heard some really convincing sounds from this. I've just, this is my snapshot. I haven't dialed it in or anything. You just load up the EQ block here, and this is on jumbo. It basically scoops out all that mids and makes it sound um, acoustic y, I would say. Well, I'm just going to try something now. Because I, I, I actually saw this earlier. Um, let's see if. Wow, that sounds great. All right. So, what have you done there? I'll unmute my mic. Sorry, I can't really hear it in the room, so um, I'll take your word for it. But um, <laughs> I read this earlier, so I I put the acoustic simulator. Um, oh. So I've got the LH Studio Comp, um, 
uh, just stock. Uh, I've got the acoustic simulator. I did crank the level a little bit because it's kind of, uh, it was quiet in the room. Um, and then I actually put it through um, an IR, an acoustic uh, IR. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I tried that before, and I, well, I guess it depends on the IR user, of course, because then the IRs will have different EQ as well, because that's what they are, but that's that's the other, yeah, that makes sense, though. That sounded really natural to me. I found some on a website somewhere, um, and, and I, it's like a half a dozen that I got in a file, uh, and this particular one is the Taylor 314CE Earthworks. Yeah, I've got that, uh, I've got that too, I think. So what did yeah. you what did you do on the acoustic sim? What are your settings? Is it just stock? I, it, it, it's stock. Uh, I turned the level up a little bit to give me a bit more in the room. Let me add it again. So it's EQ acoustic sim. So now I've got the same as you here. Uh, I did. I put the LA Studio Comp uh, just before it. Are you using well. the neck pickup on your guitar? Uh, that was the middle. Ah, middle. Okay. Because I read that somewhere. Even that without an IR, it's pretty darn good, I think. Yeah, and you can kind of warm that up. Um, you, you, you'd probably add, you know, you'd, it's all about the mid range, isn't it? I mean, that is super scoopy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you kind of put a compressor and some delay and some big reverb and chorus on, you, it's instant eighties. Oh wait, I wait, 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 no, wait, 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 wait! I had my mid, I had my mid scoop on from the VH4. <sighs> I think I could do the go I could play at the Golden Fleece and play Oasis covers with that. <laughs> they wouldn't get. <laughs> but you know what? Though that kind of you know I the, think it's great. the pedal it's, the pedal it's going for. You know the Boss AC two. It it was never, you know, it was never supposed to sound like an actual acoustic. The only electric guitar that I have heard ever that sounds like really like an electroacoustic is a Variax, right? Variax, Variax is awesome. Some people say the sound is too IRE, as in too wet, too kind of distant sounding. But, you know, again, when you record real acoustics, that is what it sounds like. I, yeah. I think, the, you know, let's get this out of the way, the Variax technology from those years ago is phenomenal. I mean, the way that tracks and does the pitch and the different tunings, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we get a new Variax soon, but if we don't have a Variax right now, I think this is good enough. And I think for someone like me, I do a lot of, um, you know, open chords and sing. So maybe mm. for me, let me try this. Maybe I could bring that to another path, right? You and could blend absolutely it, Blend that in with the, uh, not the, not the Tube Screamer, although that can warm up acoustic sounds as well, as I've been yeah. finding out lately. Um, maybe I could blend that in with the, Princess, let me just try that. Yeah. See if I can get the blend. Get the blend. Oh, I've got to put it. Here. Yeah, let me see if I can make, balance them out. You can keep talking. I'm just going to mute my mic so you don't hear my strings. And this is kind of a sound. What while while Aaron's doing his thing, um, this is a sound that you'll hear time and time again. Um, stuff. You kind of you're really good fan. Pull Me Under, uh, the intro to Pull Me Under and other things is an acoustic and an electric at the same time. So, uh, and you'll hear that a lot that's, in a lot of tunes. That's working great, um, Ross. And you know what? Brings me back to what I started with. This is what I wanted. Like, yes, a clean Fender amp with your guitar plug straight in and you play it. Yes, it sounds huge. It sounds wonderful in the room, right? But this mm. is stuff you cannot do with analog. And this is the direction I want digital to take. I now have a clean amp um, with the acoustic blended in. I could add some delay, three reverbs. I could even use the 12 string tuning effect. I could make a very interesting new and unique sound that analog cannot do, rather than just trying to recreate the amp like I did earlier on by trying to match the Kemper profile. Now I can make a new sound, which is even better than just a Kemper profile. I can make a sound which when I play, a, a, when I play in a three piece band and I strum the guitar, you hear like acoustic from one side, electric from one side, stereo delay. I could use the freeze effect. This is the kind of stuff that I want. I want to create new and better sounds than just plugging into an amp because I can do that any, any time of the week, right? So I think yeah, that was sounding really cool. Dude, you, you know, it, 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 
really good to hear that. Uh, yeah, that was fantastic. That's really, it's, really it's, cool. Yeah, It's really good what you just said there because, I mean, you know, we can take the company line and we can take individuals line. If you, if you were talking to Eric now, um, Eric Klein, he would be beaming with what you've just said there about creating new and interesting sounds and clever routing and, and, and on all this cool stuff and triggering other things. It's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of Eric's world. That's what, that's what we kind of want people to do. Um, the brilliant thing is we also want people like me that will just use one amp model over and over and over again and, and a few pedals because I don't, you know, I, I love amps. I love real amps. I love valve amps, whatever. Um, I hate carrying them around. Yeah. Hate oh, it. man. I bought, a two, it, I bought a 212 last year because we had some band gigs. And I, 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 the first day I put that 212 in the car, I was like, nah, I'm returning it. I'm not, I'm not keeping this 212. It was cool, yeah. but it was such. I mean, it's just yeah. You know, I'm I'm not like I'm it not is. like I'm not one who's like sell all your amps, you know, just buy a stomp and no. get rid of it. But but you know, you have to factor in the convenience factor. But I guess I'm just trying to look at a different angle. I'm trying to look at an angle. Like I said, I said to my friend the other day, like a, a typewriter is a wonderful thing, and then you get mm -hmm. like a, a laptop, right? And there'll be people that say, well, that typewriter has mystique and is cool and it's so real and it's got stories to tell. And that's all true. But the laptop does not just type letters like the typewriter does. The laptop does, for better or worse, Facebook, Photoshop, video editing, games, right? Order your, order your groceries. This is the stuff I want from digital. And I'm surprised, personally, I thought this would have come sooner. This is what I see digital excelling at, this kind of stuff. Like, like, like I'm, not, I'm not saying about creating weird and outrageous sounds either. That's not really my bag. I mm. just want my guitar, because I do a lot of three-piece band where I play, you know, we do like um, Van Morrison and the Beatles and Breakfast at Tiffany's. I want that kind of 90s rock, acoustic, electric sound. And now I can create it in something like an HX Stomp and just play so easily, or with this and run my vocal through it as well, which is really, really exciting. But yeah, this, I mean, this sound, we just knocked it out there. I just think that's really great. I didn't even pan it or anything, which of course would make it sound even bigger. I just did a split path with the acoustic sim and the clean amp, and it just sounds like this. Name Sounds that, great. Name that tune. Uh, Breakfast at Tiffany. <laughs> Too easy. All right, cool. All right, cool. Let's let's move on then. Um, what should we look at next? If you're in the chat and have anything you want to look at, let us know. But I have. Let me see if I have something else planned here. Yeah. So I have. Well, I have my heavy sand, which is basically just my. Um, that's just the VH4 that I was working on earlier. <laughs> So you can hear Super Scoopy, because I've, I've basically copied the, the uh, Kemper profile. Um, yeah, that's yeah, not really the kind of stuff that I play, but I just, I, just, I just like that sound. I just like that amp model. And for that one, I'm using the, that's the stock cab, the 412 Cali. Again, sounds great through that cab, a 412. So what I would do. Um, well, so let me turn the what? EQ off, first of all, because I've cut all the mids which I know a lot of people say you shouldn't do. I was literally just trying to do a tone match for a video. This is what the amp sounds like, um, you know, just with the amp controls only. So it's just a monster of a heavy high gain amp, right? Again, I wouldn't normally, I don't play songs like that, but I like having that tone available. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let me just tweak this one second. Like I said, apologies, my setup here is um, it's a little clunky. Uh, but so this is kind of how I've set uh, the diesel up, um, and I'll kick something in, and and it'll kind of show you how how I do it basically. So so straight up. Wow. I'm kicking, kicking the secrets. Wow. 
That sounds awesome. So, wow. So, all I've done there, that's that's uh, that's actually not the lead model. Um, weird with, um, I, I think, with some of my choices. I can use a lot of gain, um, but I tend to like doing things with lower or medium gain stuff and then boosting that. Yes. So, so straight out, that was the um, that was the mega channel. Did you guess his channel three um, stock didn't didn't change a thing. Mm. So let me try let me try it then. This is what I had again uh, from that example earlier. I've got the scoop mids. So I'll just bring the mids back up. <laughs> something i've noticed yeah um if you play for too long yeah um it gets all glitchy and weird which i'm guessing is a youtube or a facebook algorithm let, that let, says, let's, oh, let's, you're, let's you're know music. let us know in the chat no it shouldn't be let us know in the chat if when i'm playing it's kind of going weird and breaking up because it shouldn't be it should be coming through my 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 side i think should be coming through fine your side will go glitchy because you're the guest but let us know right. in the chat if it is or not uh, I'm going to do that again and then switch to the mega. And I'll just tell you, just if, if it's going glitchy, just ignore it. I'll just tell you what I think of the differences. Hang on. Not not too far away. I think I like that. I think yeah. I think actually I'm very impressed with those stock settings. That sounds really great actually. Just stock. Yeah, it's yeah. straight out of the box. It's kind of. Yeah. I, I think the VH4 has a very very um, recognizable sound. It's just for, huge. For it's just a monster. It. Yeah, I, I yeah. know, I know, I know. But it's just fun. I don't play songs with this kind of sound, but I, it's so much fun to have this sound. And I usually well, boost it. I boosted it with a. Do you do this? I've got the old uh, tube screamer on one four and a half and ten like pushing the guitar into it even harder do you do that on your on your patches no i my go-to boost um so i do this with a bunch of stuff um i have the uh, uh the clunk the minotaur uh and i have the gain set depending on what i want to do generally the gain is set at 1.1 so there's a sweet spot with the clon where at kind of one and under on the gain, um, it, it it's a it's a clean boost, a very clear. Um, as soon as you get to 1.1, 1.2, there's a certain mid range that comes through. It's not like a tube screamer mid range; it's a mm. different one, um, and you can kind of tweak that with the tone control. So I I like that, and I like that right before the amp. As kind of a last gain stage, so um, and I'll. I think the that. sorry, I think the reason I do that is because my strat is so low output that I need. I re, I, I enjoy that pushing that into the amp. It's just so low output. This guitar, I mean, if I, I just wanted to show this, if you go from the split um, single coil mode to the humbucker mode, it's just such a it's such it's pushed already. So maybe I don't need that. In fact, let me just if you don't mind, let me just try it without the mm. uh, drive in. In fact, I'll do three things. The first one will be single, uh, split coil mode on the guitar with no boost. The second one will be with the full humbucker sound. And then the third one will be with the drive as well. And let's see which one we prefer. really noticed the boost a lot i gotta say on this guitar switching between the, the single coil and the and the humbucker on an amp this heavy i don't really notice the difference maybe i would on lead more 
But I think with the clean stuff I do, but I, couldn't, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't really feel it because they're so heavy and pushed anyway. I didn't really feel it on the rhythm stuff. Yeah, I mean, oh, um, there we go. That serves me right for being barefooted. So to go in on this one from, and again, I think, you know, maybe some of it's down to the player, I guess, or whatever, but I, I don't know how much of a difference you'll hear with this if I do the same, so I'm in my mind. So yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard it, I heard it. Let me, let me, and you've got no boost on, right? It's just the amp. That that was no boost. But if I put that boost on, if I put that clon on, um, yeah. oh, can we that, hear that? that that should be. Um, you, you'll notice it considerably more because what the clon's doing, it's adding a little bit of sparkle on the top end, but it's also tightening the low end a little bit. Um, it is boosting the front end ever so slightly, but but not by too much. So so I'll go without and then uh, humbucker without, single coil without, and then humbucker with and single coil with. So. <laughs> now i was wrong so what this kind of goes back to that hx model in you know modeling everything inside out and how the amp works so listening to that even though it's kind of quiet in this room um what the amp's actually doing it's already um I, I guess i'm not technically minded with amp circuits and everything but what it sounds like and, and feels like is happening is when i'm driving that front end it's already there's something in that amp circuitry that that front end is already being driven so much and it's already super compressed um or maybe something to do with power amp or whatever so putting a boost pedal, even a really super low gain boost pedal into that front, it's just making it kind of compress even more and not actually altering the sound too much. How so do you that was set, interesting. How do you set that? Is this the, uh, did you say it's the, which? which uh, the Minotaur. Minotaur, Minotaur, Minotaur. Minotaur. What, what settings would you have in front of that heavy amp like that? So at the moment, so I'll I'll just leave it. Um, I could change it with snapshots, obviously, but I, I generally leave it. So the gain on that was on 1.2. Um, okay. Depending on my mood, it'll be 1.2, 1.1. 1. 1. Okay. Um, level at 6, which I think is the default. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I might just bump that up a little bit. Um, again, depending on what I need or, or whatever. Uh, and then the tone at the moment is 6.2. Um, I might bump that up again a little bit ever so slightly okay. it can get quite sharp if you go too high with that model so it's more yeah, of a, a boost more of a boost than uh adding more gain yeah. now if you had a low output pickup like on my fender strat would you yep. add more gain because it, because because the guitar is so kind of quiet and, and low output would you add although i've got to say it does still sound great with this vh4 which is why i always liked the vh4 but would you mm. add more gain to compensate for those weaker pickups? I mean, obviously on here you've got a real humbucker, so you don't need any help with that. But with, with the, would you? How, how would you address something like my 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 um, '60s Strat? Um, I, I'm really lazy when it comes to this stuff. Um, I genuinely use one preset for everything I do. Mm. Me, too. Um, me too, me too, me too, me too. But I would tweak it for the guitar. I won't. Oh, but what if you have a guitar that's super low output and a guitar that's super high output? Um, you have I to, would, don't you? No, I would be choosing to play that guitar for its merits, right? Mm. Okay. So, be, be, because the, the way I look at this, um, I... I, you can do so much with Helix, right? It, it, it's insane. You, you know, my needs are so simple, it's ridiculous. You know, I have a couple of go-to out models, a bunch of go-to pedals uh, and effects, and that's kind of me. 
and and I play now with eight or nine different singers, um, and pretty much the only thing that I don't do is classical or metal. Mm. Um, you know, we play soul and funk and Motown and rock and indie and blues, um, uh, pop, uh, all, all sorts. Uh, we'll do some U2 covers, right, uh, yeah. with another yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, it's the same preset. My okay. my edge sound is a Boogie Lone Star model with a clon, um, and all I do is I crank the delay level up, and th and that's it. Um, and it sounds like sounds like the edge. But I am exactly the same. In fact, let me just okay. Let me just do something. Then let me just play that and then grab the other guitar to show you what I mean. But I'm the hmm. same. I have a one dual preset. I, I, again, I like the new stuff, and I, I will work it into other presets to use it. Uh, if I had unlimited DSP, I'd have all that in one preset. I don't want yeah. like one preset per song. Or I want a fantastic clean sound, a fantastic slightly gainy sound, fantastic heavy sound. That's all I want. I don't want to be yeah. um, changing around. But let me just do this one more time, and let me play that um, that yeah, sound we had. And I'll switch to the Fender just to show you what I'm talking about, because it might be useful for some people. Actually, before I do that, some questions from the chat here. Um, yeah, which is really cool. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Thomas Moore says, "How do you set the volume levels to get a good sound at low volume?" Uh, I have a new Pod Go, and I can't get close to those sounds. I, my 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 two cents is, I I just think I think the in ears. I I, re I really like the in ears. What do you think, um, Ross? Um, can't get close to those sounds. Remember, yeah, this is stock. I mean, this what, is stock what, settings, what you... right? This is stock settings. Again, this is stock settings, oh. but the only thing is yeah. that uh, the pod. Just remember, though, the PodGo does not have the VH4. Do you know if the PodGo will get the VH4? Um, I I saw on a forum earlier that someone within the company had said we're working on it. Um, okay. I've not had any official confirmation. Um, genuine, and I can I can actually be honest about that one. I've not heard from any official sources within the company that we're going to put any of 3.0 in PodGo. I expect that we're going to try. Um, I expect we're to try and optimize it and and put at least some of the favorite stuff in. Um, you, you know, but PodGo is limited for uh, you know for a reason. So uh, th there is thing there are things that we can't fit within PodGo. So um yeah it, it, podgo and helix will not kind of the updates will not run simultaneously and you won't always get one thing in another so uh, um, but we'll yeah. do what we can yeah uh shane says if you like this stuff then maybe trade up to a helix floor uh shane says sorry i started the stream late can i confirm is the guitar the only analog part of the signal chain in these examples yeah i am my my my, my helix floor is going to my interface with an xlr cable Although you can use the Helix Explorer as an, inter an audio interface and go straight in digitally as well, which is awesome. So yeah, the guitar is the only analog thing here, and it sounds pretty well, awesome. I, I don't know about you, but I'm analog. Oh no, I'm, I'm a robot. Didn't, didn't I right. tell you? Didn't I tell you that? Once All right. <laughs> so I'll just show you um, what I mean here. So um, let me just tweak this slightly. Um, so this is another way I would use that Lone Star model. Uh, okay. Clean that up. No, I want to do that. I want to do that. Right. So I've got a sound there. That's actually channel two. Um, is that oh, all? Man. Is that all on the bridge pickup? Uh, that was yeah. Yeah. Um, was it? Can't remember. Can't even remember what I did. But the, yeah. So there's your bridge, bridge bridge pickup. So there's a little bit of hair, and I can tap that. So you don't you don't use super clean sounds. You have you like you like your sound to be a bit dirty, right? You don't use like a super super clean like I was doing earlier. I I, I can. Um, I mean, let's let's do that. I've, I've actually run out of space. Balls. Um, let me get rid of the fuzz. Um, no, I want that. I want that to demonstrate. I know what I'm gonna do. I He's, know what I'm gonna he do. He said he said space balls. That's a good movie. Um, sorry. 
Sorry, am I swearing? <laughs> I'm, I'm not no, I just no, I just it. I just saw the movie. That's all. I'm not even thinking about it. That's awful. Um, <laughs> so I, what can I do here? That's what I'm going to do. Right, I'm not going to use the Dirty Channel. And Thomas, let us know what guitar. Let us know what your setup is as well. Like, what guitar are you using, and all that kind of. What, what, what are you monitoring with? That's really important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all of that is is super important. <clears throat> right, nearly there. It, 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 I say it'll be worth the wait. It probably won't. Um, <laughs> so this is the patch you sent me, right? I've just loaded it up on mine. So you it, have a it, bunch it, of overdrive pedals that you're stacking. You've got four pedals you're stacking there. That's cool. Yeah, it is, it is and it isn't the preset um, because I've got one line dedicated to my mic. This is kind of the abridged version. Um, so. But that's kind of roughly the clean sound. Uh, that was the neck pickup so. And if I put that clon, that's the uh, neck. That's there, the neck pickup. Wow, I thought it was the, I thought it was the bridge uh, pickup. Uh, that that's the bridge pickup. And then neck. And I can roll the tone off. Um, so that's if I want that's the Cali Texas friend. Channel Two, right? yeah um and then and that's got the um that one's got the kinky comp on uh with a mix about halfway if i put that clon on uh, the minotaur minotaur potato potato <laughs> So there's my kind of on the edge of breakup. And that'll go from kind of very subtle. Bridge pickup, humbucker. Um, but let me do this. If I go to a different guitar. So that'll be my clean sound and my kind of low end. Um, let me go with... I'm dying, I'm dying to try it on this end. Do you mind if I do just it. play? <laughs> I want to see if it sounds... what the sound's like on here. Okay, that sounds really overdriven. Why is that? I'm using the... Um, I'm using got the... the... Do you have your, your volume on, on max, on 10, on your guitar? Yes. Um... So the trick with channel two. Because it sounds kind of um, crunchier than yours. Check it out. Yeah. Actually, I like that. That's the, that's the kind of mid sound that I, I want that I was telling you about earlier. That's my kind of like, um, uh, you know, kind of stuff. Like, I, can't, I can't think of a good uh, example, but like, should I stay or should I go? That kind of stuff, that kind of rocky stuff that's not too heavy. I, I, yeah, like well, I like that. I like that. Yeah, and on that model, um, turn your bass uh, on the amp. Uh, turn the bass down to like zero point one. Wow. But why does it's it... such a bassy oh. amp? Oh, do you have on the on your Helix? Do you have the uh, input pad turned on or off? No, it's not. So I'm, I'm just surprised. Like this is my guitar with those settings on the bridge humbucker with the full mode engaged. Check it out. Right. If you do that on yours, it's not. Is it that? Maybe. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Can you just? Do uh, that? So if you did that on mine, you'll. If you loaded up my preset, um, yeah. That so the channel two, um, the gains are actually really low. They're like down to about four. Oh. Or is that? That says right four point four and six point three. Uh, is that the one I sent you? Yeah. Sorry, it's still zoomed in, so I can't see it too much. Oh, there you go. Um, I got 4.4, 4.4, base on 0 0.1. Oh, there you go. Just do that. Do that. Do the same thing on yours. Um, well, so I've changed now, so that clean oh, you changed guitar. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I've got the. Got the it, well, well, it was just to kind of demonstrate the difference in pickups. So okay, this is. Okay. Um, 
Um, I don't know if this is higher output or what, but obviously a very different sound. And... Put the clone on. That's a, that's a great tone. What, so what if you wanted super clean, like for some funk or something, what would you do? Would you turn down the guitar, the, the, the guitar volume or would you turn down the gain on the amp on the model? Um, generally, what you'll find is um, a lot of amp models, like clean amp models that we use, um, deluxe reverbs or the Princeton or whatever, you'll notice the master volume is up. It's like right up high. Yeah, yeah. If you were to get a Princeton or a Deluxe Reverb or a Plexi or whatever, um, the, the, there is no master volume. So the volume up high, um, what's that going to do to a vamp? It's going to distort or it's going to be on the sweet spot. Mm. So, you, you know, you kind of, there's a balance between the drive and the master volume with a lot of these amps uh, that you're going to do. Uh, I mean, if I wanted a super clean... <laughs> Nice. You know, which is that that's the surf. And that's you kind of funky. Yeah, that's what I mean. So what did you do? You turned the, the guitar volume down? Uh no, I, I pulled the surf down. Oh, just different guitar. Okay. Yeah. All right, fine. All right. So, but, but that's the kind of point that I was making um, about using one preset or, or on, you know, not using boosts or anything like that for different guitars. It's kind of, for me, I'll right. I'll use this, I'll use this yeah. for basically everything, unless this doesn't do something specific that I want. Um, so if I'm doing a George Benson number with someone, I'll pull out a three three five. Right, of course, but that's or, or, that's or genre genre specific. But I would, I think, yeah, I have this problem on my live streams on Sundays when I do covers. I'm I'm right. going I, every week. I try to use a different guitar from a different brand, you know, just to mix it up. And I have to redo yep. my settings every time. So I think that's there's something to be said for just sticking with one guitar as well, just so you 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 haven't got to keep like uh, adjusting or even I don't know. In my opinion, but let me just do this. I wanna I wanna play this bridge pickup and then play the bridge pickup from the um the, those custom shop 69s they just i just think they're really low output but i just really like them yeah. for the clean stuff so check this out mm. oh i turned the mic off You see what I mean? That's so like but, uh, squeaky. <laughs> well, but but kind of listening on this side, um, and again, you, you know, we're back to that point of it's all about what you're monitoring with. You know, mm. with with the the uh, uh, Doc Brown's here. Doc Brown in the house. He's here to tell hey. me all the answers. Here we go. Now there's a man that can play George Benson. Um, <laughs> I definitely can. There you go. Um, so, so what I'm listening to here, um, both guitars sounded fantastic, but completely different. So, so, so the point I was making earlier, yeah, that you would pick that guitar up to play a specific sound, right? You, and 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 this is all back to if I'm dialing a sound in, you know, you're dialing a sound in or or one of these fine viewers are, are dialing a sound in, you've got, you've got a goal in mind. And there are so many different factors that go into that. So a little bit of knowledge, you know, going into that will help you in the long run for sure. I, but I could also, well, I could also turn the tone down on this one. I could also yeah. use a boost just to try and see if I can fatten them up. You know, like, let me try this one, this, this, this uh, original preset. 
There's not enough gain there. Hang on. I think you can get there if you do stuff like that. If you if you turn your tone down, if you add a slight boost, yeah. which is basically emulating that pickup being a humbucker, I think I can get there. And um, yeah, I, I, that's why I would have two presets because those guitars for me are just so drastically different. Um, yeah. But like I said, I love this one. I really love this guitar, mostly for the cleans, I guess, because it's you know it's those vintage kind of sounding pickups. Yeah, you, you can definitely do a lot with. Um, pickups, tone control, and volume control. Yeah. Um, I mean, particularly, you know, depending on how your guitar is set up, and and I haven't had a chance to do it to the to the Pacifica yet, um, but I like to have a treble treble bleed mod um, on on all my guitars. So when I turn the volume down, I don't want that kind of darkness to creep in or the the, the tone to roll off. Uh, but you know, there's kind of ways around that. There's certain effects or certain amp models that that will combat that for sure. Um, but if I go, so if I've got that, um, you know, so I've got the compressor, I've got the Lone Star model, and I've got the Clon on there. So I'm now going to turn that um, as so bridge pickup humbucker. <laughs> You know, that's got a little bit of dirt. Um, but what I want to try and achieve now, it might take me a second to find it, but I want to turn that into kind of a neck pickup humbucker, right? Same guitar, just a little bit of tweaking. That exact sound without changing anything but guitar. So... Hmm. I'm lazy. I don't. I like to leave all my controls on ten, and that's why I like the new Yamaha because I don't have to worry about turning the tone down and stuff like that. Of course, a Variax in that case would be amazing as well because then you can save all these settings per snapshot and just recall yeah. them straight away. But um, but yeah, I think I think I can get. Um, I can get sounds that are. But I just have to uh, play with the uh, with the the patch. That's all. I just think these guitars are very different, and I want to just leave everything on ten all the time. So it's easier for me just yeah. to use a slightly different patch dialed in slightly differently. You know. No, absolutely. For for that for for that scenario, if you just want to pick up a strap because you feel like a strap one day, or pick up three three five because you feel like a three three five one day, but you want to. Yeah. You that was your patch. I think that sounds fine, right? I just I just um, turned my treble down to five on that bridge pickup. So that's yeah. fine. All right, let's do some fun stuff. I've made a preset uh, with some of the pitch things in it. This cool. for me, of course, we were here to talk about 3.0, and this is the stuff that I find incredibly useful. And uh, let's see what sound I've got here for this thing. That's pretty dark sounding. I shall just load the stock one, like you said, the mega. I like that. I have to bring my channel volume down so I don't blow us away. Or maybe not. Okay, so here's the thing, right? The pitch stuff I think is so darn good. Yes, there's a slight bit of latency, of course. And if I zoom in here, you can change it. You can turn it from stable to, I know you yeah. can't see it right now, but it, you can turn it from extra stable all the way down to extra fast. Now, extra yeah. fast, of course, has some artifacts because it is so fast. The thing yeah. is, I hope, I mean, I guess in the future it will be optimized and get faster. I guess new hardware will cause that to be um, easier to use. But even extra stable, if I'm just playing it, I actually forget that i am got it turned on. I don't think it's, I don't know, if, I don't know, do, do you know if this latency of this compared to like a Variax, are they on a, are they on a par or is this, better, is this uh, faster or slower than a Variax? Do you know? I've certainly not compared them, even though I've got a Variax behind me. Um, I haven't compared them now. 
I know the people have been working on this stuff, and I haven't compared it to um, comparable pedals. The only reference point I have for polyphonic pitch shifting is I have a Micropog. Um, I feel like those. And, and it's great, but there's absolutely some latency on that, too. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, it, and it isn't much, but I think, again, it's kind of in what do you want to do? Because there isn't a unit that I know of that has zero or near zero latency that if you go down below kind of, you know, half an octave, um, when you're really taking up processing power and, and it's really got to do some work, as soon as you get into that sort of level, then things are going to start to get a little bit weird. But you know what I said earlier about I want digital to make me sound bigger? Yeah. Well, look, check this out. If you turn on the, um, if you turn on the pitch and take it down um, an octave, basically, your guitar, and you, and you can mix it as well. Yeah. So you don't have to have it on full. If you have it on full, it would sound really muddy and weird like this. But if you just bring that mix down and have that like, pan, again, panned or just blended in, your guitar suddenly sounds twice as big. Oh yeah. Or of course, if you, if you do the, um, you know, well, like that's a detune the, yeah, or the Royal right? Blood trick, but he does it the other way around. So he'll play a bass uh, with, a, 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 you know, a pog yeah, or whatever this, he's using. This is good for bass players, right? To do that. Yeah. They do the opposite of the guitar player. But um, yeah. even like, if I sit and play down tune for a while, honestly, I forget that I'm using the pitch block. It's that yeah. good. And it sounds that convincing. And, and okay, there is a bit of latency, of course, there has to be. But it's not something that really puts me off that much. I, I think it sounds amazing. And it just makes your guitar so, sound so much bigger for that heavy stuff. It's just awesome. So, excuse me a minute. Awesome. We have... Um, oh, <laughs> a special dog appearance. <laughs> we, 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 we have a guest. A guest appearance. I bring the cats in, but they might start fighting. Yeah. What? Well, you can't be in there, pal. No, the 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 uh, the pitch is really, really, really convincing, really natural. I'm really impressed because it's not easy to do the pitch stuff. It really, you know, like even I've been using Melodyne for Logic, and and once you start going too far, that sounds weird. I have to say, it doesn't work as well for acoustic, but I think this is probably voiced for electric guitar, and that's the yeah. reason. Um, and again, the Variax will let you do alternate tunings. You can't do that with this, obviously. This is like everything goes up or down. But um, we, we didn't even try the 12 string earlier on with the, with the uh, acoustic sounds, but this, it well. yeah, it's great. And the, um, like I said, the capo for me is awesome because now you can play your uh, kind of Hendrixy stuff without having to retune the guitar, which is always really nice as well. If you find a backing track on YouTube and it's like everything's tuned down a half step yeah. or a, a semitone, as Ross would say, it's kind of annoying because you're like, oh, now I've got to retune. But now you just turn it on. It's super convincing, yeah. and of course, you know, uh, that's not that's not the right tone for Hendrix, but it's super, super convincing. And I'm actually thinking there could be ways to use this in performance as well, because if oh. you if you assign it to a, a foot switch, you could do stuff like this. You could um, use the foot switch to like a like a B bender or something like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> so if I put it up, <laughs> the, I think you'd, you'd probably use. Um... I mean, I gotta say, they they both sound so natural. Like you, if I didn't tell you which was which, I don't think you'd be able to tell. I'm basically just turning that. Uh, I'm playing the same mm. notes on the guitar, but turning on the poly capo, and I just think they both sound identical. It's really impressive. Yeah. <laughs> So for the B bender thing, you'd use the uh, uh, you would use the poly wham. 
Oh, the Wham. I haven't even used that yet because I've been, I've been using the Stomp with no expression pedal. So, yeah, I haven't even tried the Wham yet. Exactly, yeah. So there's more, more yeah, stuff because to use. The, 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 the Wham is sort of linear, whereas the, 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 the cap or the pitch is... Um... Hours of fun. Yeah, I don't whatever. That's really great. To get the beat bender. I've never used the whammy. Pe- I never used the whammy pedal, but that's that, the sounds are just so good. Like I said, I I didn't think it would be this good. Where if I played a riff and then played it with the pitch on, I just thought there'd be a slight difference. I think they sound so, it's so convincing. And imagine if you were playing a solo. I haven't tried. Imagine playing a solo and then you use that like as a way to. Or even if you change keys, if you play a song where it goes from D to E flat, you could just hit that on and just go up, you know, without without having to lose your open chords. I think that could be really great, stuff like that. There's one song that we play um, uh, with one of the singers we work with, and um, Ain't ain't Nobody, Chaka Khan. Yeah. And it's great fun, um, and I only really kind of know the rhythm part we play it in E flat, which I think is the original key. Mm, mm. And I only know the rhythm part in E flat. When it comes to and and there is no guitar solo in there, but pretty much every gig it's I get looked at as like, right, Ross, go for it and I'll take a guitar solo. Playing a guitar solo in E flat is awful. Yeah. yeah I know. It sucks. Unless you're tuned it sucks. down and you're playing yeah. in E. So yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to using this. Yeah. Um, oh amazing. To um, playing E because that's easier. But for for someone that plays in like a wedding band, or say you're the lead singer and your and your voice, you know, there's a few songs you, yeah. you you want that your voice is a bit shot that night. This is this is real world useful application. I'm kind of thinking yeah. outside the box a bit because like we've got the poly sustain here, which if I play a chord will make that chord last forever, which is yeah, which I, yeah. again I, I really really I really really wanted. And I put it at the end of the chain so I can then add effects without it affecting that sound. That's so cool. And then you could also, of course, oh, I lost my pitch block from the floor, but you could combine those two, which I think is super impressive. If you like go down a, oh, I did the wham. That's why I lost my button. If you do the poly capo and go down, yeah. say two steps, so your E is now a D, open E is now a D. All right, and then you sustain that. And now you're basically in D. It's, it's, I'm starting to get confused, but. And if I turn the um, capo off, of course. Now I've got to play in a different key. Oh, what's that? No, I'm confused myself now. But my point is, <laughs> I'm getting confused. But my point is, you can combine the two together. It's great for yeah. practicing as well, because you could play like if if you if you're learning. I, I love stuff like this for practicing. If you're learning or something like, I want to practice my soloing in in like you said E flat minor. You can tune down with that pitch block just one step or one half step to that and sustain it like that. And then you can turn that off, right? So we're in, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't change because it's it like the looper is at the end. And then you can practice soloing it. Yeah, and vice versa, you can mix it up. You can do it the other way around. And great practicing tool, great recording tool, great That's writing good. tool great live tool like you said like now you can finally get those those low um those low e flat notes without t- detuning the guitar i mean I, you know yeah I, I, sh- I should i should sort of not be as lazy as i am and just kind of learn how to play in different keys better uh or practice in different keys better well, but no, yeah no, no. Peter Bantle, no because yeah. what happens when you go and play superstition and they're playing an e flat and you want to have, and you want to play that, you know, you can't play it because um, you can't get that low, that low note without retuning the guitar, carrying two guitars around, right? So now you can just turn on the pitch, 
Yeah. Oh, that's why, that's why I was getting messed up. I didn't turn it down. There we go. All right, it's incredible. Of course, when you're at home, again, in is. The in is mean I cannot hear the natural sound of the guitar because that will sound weird. If you hear the actual guitar like oh, this, yeah. like, like, check this out. Stop, 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 stop. You know? oh, I was making my feelings itch. <laughs> but now, when you play that riff, that's not the riff, but if you're playing a riff in E like that, where normally it would sound like this. That's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly useful, right? It's absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. So. Yeah, I think that I think that's why I like this update so much. The stuff in here is practical and and it makes your guitar sound bigger. Like I said, if you just mix in an octave of your guitar at like 10%, suddenly you've got like two guitars, right? Stuff like yeah. that. So or just to beef things up or whatever. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, that's that's what I mean. I mean. Again, making the sound bigger. Not not making up for the fact that oh, it's not a tube amp. Not that's not what I'm saying. But using the benefits of the tool you're given. So, you know, do, doing stuff that analog gear cannot do. And I think we've all, I've already, I wasn't out today to prove anything, but I'm just sharing with you my, my experiences. I've managed to match the, the tones I was enjoying from the Kemper very well, which makes me very happy. But now I'm also able to do stuff that the Kemper cannot do. And uh, my mm. hat's off to line six. I mean, the people that made this, this pitch algorithm is, they should be, you know, handsomely rewarded it's fantastic of course I, I say in every video i would love if they also applied that to the mic input so i could also have intelligent vocal harmonies and then i could throw away my tc helicon gear because that's something i i, I would like to see i decide i'm sorry i have to put this into every video i would like to see line six go into the vocal world because the effects on the mic are so darn good anyway if they could use this pitch algorithm for harmonies and things like that on the voice then this could be like an all-in-one. Imagine turning up to a gig with this, with a three-piece band, and having that huge guitar sound, running your mic through it. I mean, you're only limited by the DSP at that point, you know? It's just a great, just a great thing, so. Give, give me one second. I'm gonna mute myself. Okay. Thomas Moore. Yeah, no problem, my friend, but keep them to yourself, okay? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Remember, your guitar will affect the things as well. And thanks for hanging out, Shane. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's great gear. You should pick one up. Really is awesome, especially with this update. It's really moved it up a notch. I'll see you in the next live stream. This is, um, this is going to be interesting now because I'm probably, and hopefully if this works, then I'm going to... Can't make myself sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I'm doing, I've got the party camp out. Um, on, on my vocal channel. And now, now he can make all the, yeah, now he can make all the prank phone calls he wants to and not get uh, in trouble. Um, oh, yeah, this, is make, <laughs> this, this is gonna make people like re feel really sick if I'm doing this. That's bit. freaking me out. But can you try this? Can you try yeah. the harmony effect on your voice yeah. and sing me uh, an A? I want to hear I'm the third of <laughs> I haven't I'm, tried. I'm I haven't tried the harmony on. effect on the voice yet. Um, so this is the harmony effect in A. Uh, yeah, but a I want to. Um, I want to hear a third above, mixed slightly below. That sounds like an octave below. There's a fourth below. No, no. I want a third. I want a third above. Uh, third above. There you go. No, sing four. That sounds. Like that sounds uh, is that uh, only one harmony? Above. Uh, twin harmony. No, I just want I just want the, the, the third only. There you go. Right, now sing now sing now sing it now sing me a song. Um no. <laughs> so that was completely useless then. <laughs> like yeah, I'm gonna sing anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that off now because it's yeah, yeah, you can that's uh, my point. It's my point. You, yeah. it's in there, you can do it now. But yeah. you know the thing T C Helicon do where the guitar chord is red. And then the harmony yes. is worked out yes. by the. I'm just if that ever comes into the helix, I will just be, you know, I'll just be shouting exploit, you know, swear words basically. I was going to say the fancy <laughs> word. I'll be so happy. And this for me is a step in that direction. That's just me being biased because I like to sing and play guitar. I'm totally I mean, biased, look, but it works great for 
the effects work great for vocals on this thing. So that would be the final step for me. Yeah, as as we say to everyone, you know, the kind of the world's a lobster to a point. Yeah. Um, we we've still got a you know endless commitment to the Helix platform. Um, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, we've not nearly reached its limits, so we can do a hell of a lot more with it. And if you have a great idea like the kind of pitch tracking TC Helicon thing, um, go to our idea scale and you know look for it. If it's on there, someone's already put that on there, vote for it and vote it up, right? Um, if it isn't on there, put it on there. Uh, and put it on the Helix user groups and, and and all this because the more an idea is kind of talked about uh, that we don't have at the moment and the more people request that uh, or vote that up on ideas scale or whatever, um, the more we're going to look at it and go, okay, can we do this? Yeah, um, I've, 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 I've seen that there. And I, I just, you know, I mean, I mean, if you don't sing, I guess you don't really care about this kind of stuff. But if you sing and play... It just yeah. seems like a logical thing to me, and uh, that's fine. I just, I just, on my, on my new board I've just made on my live streams, I actually have a stomp, a voice live touch too, because it has full MIDI control and MIDI clock, and a right. boss, a boss RC five hundred looper, and I control it all with an MC eight from Morningstar. So I actually okay. have, I've made my own, I basically made my own pedal that does all the things I personally need: the looper, the right. vocal stuff, and the stomp. But it's just if I could show up to a band gig, obviously I can't do that now anyway, but say next year um, I could show up to a band gig with just the Helix floor and, of course, DSP um, aside, if I could sing yeah. and play through it and have this huge... I mean, if I could sound like two singers and two guitarists, then job done, right? That's, it's, that's, yeah, my, yeah. that's my whole aim of this stuff, just to sound bigger than what I am. So, yeah, so... I mean, um, you're not small. I said sound bigger, not look bigger. <laughs> All right, okay. And yeah, I sit here playing a strat with vintage pickups and nine gauge strings, so I'm kind of uh, starting off in the wrong place anyway. But, but, um, but dude, you know, I mean, all right, Stevie Ray used 13 gauge strings, but there's been a whole bunch of videos out there. Rick Beato did one of yeah, a it. bunch of others. Yeah. You know, nine gauge can sound, eight gauge can sound just as big, if not bigger than a 13. Yeah. Um, you know, having experienced 13 gauge strings. On an emergency gig, and that's all I had left. Yeah, it was challenging for sure, but they definitely sounded different to my ears. On the so, so stuff like on the pitch wham, because I've been trying to try that yet. So on that, you can set it to a certain interval, right? So you could play a note and then bend up a third and back down again, rather than bending the string on the guitar. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you've kind of got to look for it because it's sort of zero to a hundred percent. You've kind of, you've got to find uh, if you if you were going to edit that if you were going to do the B bender thing for example, um, you would uh, you'd go into editing that uh, the the parameter width for want of a better description uh, or the the ratio I forget the word it's getting late um, <laughs> so you can go from say if you know standard pitch is uh, at zero percent, and then you just want to go up a tone, and that goes up to fifteen percent. Then that's what you would program in, for example. Mm. I'm getting, I'm getting confused here. Look, okay, there's the poly wham, and then if yes. I add a amp and cab, and I don't know how much DSP these new amps use. I do feel they sound a step above the other ones, honestly, like the uh, right. the VH4. But if I add I, that, I, I think the Princeton is kind of greedy. That's interesting. Did you see what just happened on my screen? Uh, no, because I'm still zoomed in. Okay, so. when I when I had the oh yeah, I should change that. When I did the um, when I did the when I had the pitch block there, right, mm. and then tried to change it to a a poly wham, it wouldn't let me. It was grayed out. No. I deleted all the stuff, and it still wouldn't let me. Then I added, then I deleted everything and added the pitch and then the amp, and it let me. It's like oh, it okay. didn't it didn't know that it it didn't know that I'd removed the blocks. It still was grayed out. So that's good to know. Maybe that's a bug. I don't know, but um, yeah. I, I, so I took away everything, and it still said, still said you can't run the. That's why I was getting really worried. I was like, what? So then I took it. Then once I took it all away, I deleted the pitch block, add, went back to add it, then the amp, and it worked fine. So yeah, yeah. that's the poly. The poly wham is there now. 
So yes, you can see, you can change it from um, zero to plus 12. Okay, so you can find out yeah. the interval you want. And there you go, yeah, yeah. In interesting tool, you know, to use instead of bending a string, you can just bend up. So if you are using tens, you can't bend up three semitones, you can just bend up on there instead. No, just nice, cool little stuff. These are, these are little tricks I don't ever really end up doing. But there is some stuff here I would use, like the transposing and the, the freeze and all that. Yeah. Imagine starting a song in the band with the freeze effect and then playing over it and then the drums come in. Stuff like that is just awesome, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. There's, so. there's some really fun. I mean, you know, I think a lot of the stuff we've talked about for sure is real kind of functional stuff. Um, but some of the kind of more interesting and inspiring things like, you know, the shuffling and looper and the new glitch delay and, and stuff like that, you know, people need to go and check out because it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's not going to be for everyone, but you can really find some interesting things. Um, and, and I haven't even really tried those yet. So that's, that's that just goes to show there's even more stuff here that I haven't even used yet. I mean, obviously I focus on the things that I'm most interested in, but it's really cool that there's even more stuff here that I haven't even used yet because this has been out for oh, yeah. a few days now, you know, and I've been I've been playing it quite a lot. So uh, yeah, it's it's really is like not just saying it. This really is an awesome update that is taking it in the direction that I personally wanted to see. So um, I'm 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 super super happy about that, and I can't wait to see what comes next. I think Eric Klein just publicly said like um, like there's still a lot of life left in the hardware and optimization oh, yeah. and stuff like that. So it's not like we're going to see a new Helix um, around the corner, right? Um, I genuinely don't know. I don't I don't get paid nearly enough to have that information. <laughs> I personally wouldn't mind. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm like way down the food chain from that. I wouldn't mind if in the, what, what would be NAM in January, we had like a Helix HD with double the DSP. I think for some people that are performing and want to use the pitch stuff, they'd be interested in that. That might be enough for them. Like if you if you if you have tones dialed in that you're very happy with, why not do that? I guess the other option is I was talking to Chad the other day, Chad Boston, and I said I I, I happen to own a stomp and a floor, so I could use the stomp for pitch effects and the floor for everything else. So it's a nice little was, ecosystem now as well, right? Yeah, oh, oh for sure. Um, and and you can do cool stuff with that as well, where you can kind of get one unit to talk to the other and and yeah. the other way around as command, well. Command center, right? Yeah, I, uh, I I spent a little time uh, on um, ended up being FaceTime in the end uh, with Perry, who plays for Pendulum, hmm. and he was doing just that. You know, he had Helix for certain doing certain things and HX Stomp for other things, and he wanted sort of one to control the other and and yeah. hit a button on one and that does something on the other and so on and so forth. Yeah. All through MIDI, and it was yeah. it took a minute because I had to kind of get my MIDI head on. Mm. Uh, but you kind of find the numbers and you kind of find a way around it and it ended up working a treat. So that was, that was good. So yeah, you can do that for sure. Yeah. That's something I'll try in the future. Um, if I need to, but, um, I told Chad, he should make, cause Chad makes screen covers and things. I said, he should make an attachment for the helix floor that holds the stomp. So it can mm. actually be an all in one that you can travel around with. And then, yeah. yeah, just watch watch him make that and make millions of, 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 uh, of pennies from that. But, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, why not use it together? I think Line 6 have done this on purpose, right? The command center is there to control other gear, but also to control each other. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, like I said, I would love nothing more than to see an iPhone and iOS or iPad version of the, of the plugin so I can use that. I mean, have you ever done this? I've, I just started a new series on it a while ago. I haven't done many videos on it yet. But I run my iPhone through the USB because the Helix has USB through I, I've been running my apps through the Helix to get keyboard synths, loopers, and drums and things, and assign them to the, the buttons on the Helix floor to trigger them off. So you can actually ex sort of expand the device with that um, with the apps for the iPad and the iPhones. Yeah. That's, that's why Eric was so smart because he's made it that he can it can work with other stuff. So you can offload stuff to yeah. other things. Very, very, very smart. We we, we you know the whole idea we behind this was just make you know the, the best unit that you can possibly make uh but also realize that for for tons of people i mean tens thousands hundred thousand millions whatever um so many people want one box to do everything right um that still doesn't exist 
Yeah. Um, you know, Helix does a lot, but it doesn't do everything. Mm. Um, we may be able to get to that point, mm. but who knows? You know, who knows what the future holds? Um, but there still is not a unit on the market that does everything. Um, it'll do most things. It'll do a lot of things. Some things really well, other things not so well. But there aren't really that many units that that are like Helix where you can go, right, okay, today I cannot be bothered with carrying anything. I want to take um, like a, a headless cricket back guitar and a Helix to the gig, and that's all I'm taking. Mm. And then two days later, you go, you know what, I'm feeling fresh. I've been for a run. You know, I'm going to take my head and two 412 cabs, um, and Helix is going to be my pedal board. But I quite fancy these three extra pedals to add to that, and you kind of build this entire rig. And then two days after, you go, well, actually, I want to incorporate Ableton and all these loops and sync, sync up the MIDI and interface stuff. And there isn't really another unit where you can do that and have separate presets for each of those kind of scenarios. Yeah. Um, and it's such a beautiful product for that. It's like whatever you can kind of think of, yeah, it can pretty much do, really. The, the thing is, I was a user of like the TC Voice Live 3 that did mm. – the, the electric sounds are not, not the best. This is, a, this is like a six-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old product, but it had the amp modeling, had the vocal effects, had the looping, had loop import – had MIDI through, but with latency. Right. But that's the, the thing with me is that's the device I'm coming from. So that's what I compare everything to, which isn't yeah, really sure. that, maybe that's not that fair, but that's, that's, um, that's what I want. So that's why I just made my own, basically. Like I said, I've got the stump, the voice type three, the looper, the, the tuner, mm. the always on tuner and the MIDI control. So I've just made that again. Great. You know, we can't do it all right now because it's a lot of work to make a, a standalone looper and all these things. So give people like modular stuff where they can make their own board if they need to. Or if you're just playing guitar, you can buy the floor and just turn up and just play. So, no, I get it. I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm too greedy. I just like to voice what I'm thinking um, to get out there into the world. That's why I started a YouTube channel, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but look, you know, what people need to remember is if, like I said earlier, if people request these features or particular models or whatever, um, we get a lot of ideas, you know, I, I think it was snapshots came directly from um, from idea scale, yeah. uh, you know, some of the amp models, uh, so on and so forth. So w we do listen, you know, we do pay attention to what people are saying. We don't just go, well, what should we do today? Mm. Um, it's like, right, what are people wanting? What's cool? What's fashionable? What's important? What's useful? Um, so while we're doing models, we're also adding all these cool new features as well, but so many of them are requests. So put the requests forward. If the request yeah. exists, vote it up on idea scale. Yeah. If we can do it and enough people want it, then we will do it. And if we can't, then we'll try and figure out why we can't and try and figure out where we round it, you know? So, yeah, I, I, I like that. It's, um, it's the world we live in. It's, 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 it's a problem with some gear. Some gear now is released before it's ready. And I mean, I mean you can argue when the Helix came out, it was, it was much, more, you know, much more bare bones than what it is now. It's not even comparable, oh. right? But yeah, some totally. products, some products, naming their names, have come out over the last few years where they're just not ready at all. And then they get kind of finished after a year or two. And, but mm. the thing is, though, that's just the world we live in. And I think it's great that we're able to influence the products as well. Like, it's amazing that if everyone says to a company, we want it to work like this, that you can do that with firmware. That's the plus and the minus of firmware, right? So, it's really, yeah, it's really great that Line 6, I mean, obviously, Line 6, you guys are all in the Facebook group, and even you, you're good enough to come on here and talk, you know, hang out with me on my channel and just talk openly about it. It's, it's awesome, and, and I, I totally get that. I'm not, I'm not saying that Line 6 don't listen to the customers. I have to say, this is probably one of the best. I mean, I've been following all the, all the gear lately, and this is one of the best firmware updates has ever been for a product because if you look at the other products if you look at the other models and things yeah some of them do regular updates and stuff like that but you rarely get like an update like this i mean are you, are you kidding me like if you just use your stomp purely as a pitch pedal like there's hundreds of dollars worth of value there it's it's really really amazing and it's exciting to see where it's going and um yeah i'm super 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 happy with this update and i'm not just saying that and i wasn't expecting to like it as much as i do i really feel like a lot of the gaps have been filled in and it's going in a new direction that I've been wanting it to go in for a long, long time. So that's awesome. 
Brad Miller says, I love everything I'm hearing. Being a Stomp user from the beginning. Awesome. Marvelous. Cheers, Brad. Came up from the pod to pod live to the XT live. Mm, awesome. Right. Awesome. Yeah. The, um, and the people that bought the pod go like, you know, that's great too. Um, I can see some people seeing this update in 3.0 and wanting to get like a Helix floor. Uh, I think anyone that anyone's in my opinion, and I'll get your opinion too, as you're a product specialist, Ross, but if you're shopping, because I get a lot of people that are, that are new to playing on the channel. If you want my opinion, if you're shopping for something now to use for your guitar, because mm. we're all, because we're all stuck at home, something like the floor where you can plug it in, use it for recording, use it as an interface. It worked great with a microphone. It's great for live streaming. I used to use it for this, actually. The noise gate on that is incredible. I now have the M20D. I think the noise gate in the Helix is actually better. So it does a multitude of things. But I mean, of course, price is a factor. But if you if you go straight for the floor, then you're kind of up there with the DSP and, and, the, and the switches and everything. If you mm. go for the, the pod go or the stomp, they're great. If that's what you need, that form factor and the stuff. And, and of course, money is a factor. But my advice to anyone is, if you want it, if you're looking to buy something and what should you buy, I would go straight for the floor, knowing that 3.0 has added this cool stuff that we can now use. And then you could also get um, native. If you're, a, if you're a computer person, you could get native and have unlimited DSP for that as well uh, for a, a reduced price. But my advice to anyone watching this that's is interested in the, in the product here is just to go straight for something like the floor to get that maximum DSP and switches you can have because all this new, new stuff has been added. What are your thoughts on that? Um, think about it. Um, think about what you want to achieve. Uh, think about what potential setup you might want to do. Um, so for me, it, it kind of has to be the rack or the floor. Um, and, and the reasons behind that, so I could potentially get away with the LT. Uh, the problem is I like to see the kind of uh, the, the the screen, the main screen on Helix. Um, and I need those scribble strips because I'm colorblind. So the color coded switches don't do anything for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I need Helix floor, but I also need I need versatility with the with the work I do. I have to have options. Um, I, I like options, you know, and I like a lot of options. I I rarely use a lot of them, but, you know. That's what I need. But this is why we have such a great range of products now. You know, there are people that, that were asking, saying, okay, well, I love the effects in Helix, but it's really big and I don't use amp models. Well, here's HX effects, you know? And then people saying, well, I kind of like the smaller size, but I really want amp models. So we go, well, here's HX stump. Here's, here's you know? my, just so you can see it, here's my board I just made. I'm quite proud of this thing. See that? Nice. There you go. So, so I've got the stomp. I've got the voice live touch simply because it does MIDI clock and MIDI control. So it's all controlled by the MC8. The boss loop of the RC500 is awesome. It will store loops and it will loop um, two tracks. I would like four, but that's fine for now. And I've got cool. the always. The reason I have the always on tuner is because that's one thing I was hoping in this update. I was hoping I'd have the ability to always have the tuner on the screen while I'm playing. But I don't know, okay. maybe it uses DSP or something to do that, and that's why it's not done. But um, I like to have a tuner on at all times when I'm, when I'm playing. So uh, that's okay. why I added the little little boss there. And, the, and I wanted to put a Peterson there, but it's too big to fit, sadly. Um, right. I love I love the Peterson stroke tuners. And the DI, simply because I'm coming out of the boss, and, the, and it's just a quarter inch, so I put a DI on the side. So for me, like I said, I've just what I've done is it doesn't do everything I want, so I've just made my own board, and I think that's a great option yeah. for people as well. Consider that with the with the MIDI connections, you can do this stuff now, so it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, awesome. Well, I think we'll start to wrap it up because we've been on for it's gone so quick. We've been on for over two hours. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh man, um, thanks everyone for watching the the show. I really appreciate it. And if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Or you can look us up, um, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to, to be notified when I post a video or go live. Ross, how do people get in touch with you? Or do you not want people to get in touch with you? Don't, don't. <laughs> um, I, um, Give them Doc Brown's email address right now and we'll be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, have a, I have a Facebook page that I never post to. Um, I have a, a lapsed YouTube channel that I haven't posted to for years, uh, but I intend to. So, you know, you can check me out there. That's uh, that's the Tone Shack, 
which I did mm. some stuff a while ago and then haven't done anything since. But there will be some stuff coming uh, in the new year on that. So we're checking out there. And then it's just Ross Bailey on Instagram. That's um, the Tone the tone Shack. How do you spell it? As regular the, uh, as you think? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the Tone Shack. Um, okay. I used to do pedal demos under another name. But mm. yeah, it'll make sense when you see it. Um, more on that, yeah. And then just Ross Bailey on Instagram. Um, if you want to see pictures of my dog and <laughs> paddle boards and random random things and stuff like SpongeBob walking down the street, that's the kind of thing you see on my Instagram. Well, I, I really appreciate your time. It's really interesting, and I'm really again, I'm just I'm just super impressed. I, everything we did today was just you know it just uh, works so well. It really is great, and um, yeah. I will be hitting you up to do another one of these in January when we see the Helix Two at what would have been Nam. <laughs> Did you, oh, he blinked. Did you see he blinked? He blinked. He blinked. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> no, thanks, man. Really? It's always, always great to hang out with you. I'm going to hang yeah. up now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see in the future and enjoy 3.0. It really is fantastic. Great work, Line 6. Thank you all. I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.